I'm super happy. Are you happy? Welcome to the BU Find Happy Podcast. Here you'll find tips and tricks to inspire you on your way to happiness, to live a courageous life of authenticity, and learn how to speak your truth with grace. I'm Michaela Johnson, and welcome to our podcast. I'm so happy to have you back on the BU Find Happy podcast. And if you like this podcast, please, please, please click subscribe, send me a message, leave me a note. I'd love to hear from you. You're going to love today's guest. You guys have been hearing me rant about detox and all things holistic, herbal, and good stuff for the past, gosh, what is it, months now. And I promised you that we would find a good guest that could share uh, legit info on these sorts of concepts and we just scraped the surface today but you guys i have stacy chalemi she has been um a guest on the dr oz show ariana huffington raves about her she is like the holistic person and i cannot wait for you to hear all of her thoughts on this um and please send me your questions i know that this is going to scrape the surface you're going to have a lot of thoughts on what she said and it really is just the beginning um so without further ado, here's Stacey Chalemi talking all things holistic. Stacey, so glad to connect. Uh, <laughs> it was thank a little bit you. of a doozy. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> oh, I'm happy to have you on the You Find Happy podcast today because, um, well, just kind of everything that you're doing is actually really aligning with um, with everything that I promote and everything that I personally believe in. So I'm really excited to talk to you and, and kind of pick your expertise a little bit. Um, can you tell the listeners a little bit about yourself and what you do and how you kind of got into this field? Well, what I do is um, I have a website called The Complete Herbal Guide, and I help people heal their bodies naturally through using um, different uh, natural uh, treatments, such as uh, vitamins, the way we eat, the way we um, address problems, uh, using meditation, yoga, um, different supplements, different herbals, vitamins. And I teach people how to incorporate a healthy lifestyle into their normal day lifestyle and show people how they could change their whole outlook on life when it comes to just the way we uh, feel, the way we look, the way we act, our energy levels, and even um, medical conditions that we might be going through and and trying to overcome. Um, I show people how to uh, live life in a more healthier environment and how the things I use could actually help people improve their lives. I love that. I love all that. Um, so many questions. So you talk a lot about the power. I I want to start here and then kind of go into diet and, uh, disease process and all that, but you talk a lot about the power of positive thinking and I'm obviously huge firm believer, um, in the power of positive thinking and even just the narrative, uh, that we tell ourselves the language that we use to describe bad things that are going on. How do you recommend people think positive or use the power of positive thinking when stuff is going really bad? Like, tragedies are happening, things like that, bad news, stuff like that. A lot of people, you know, when they go through tragedies and they go through really uh, hard obstacles in their lives, a lot of people tend to either break down or they or they tend to run the opposite way. The biggest thing is you you really need to face your fears and you need to um, move forward. Um, I like to, you know, one thing thing I suggest is keeping a journal. One way we can start to, you know, when we're going through really hard times, we have an overabundance of um, um emotion and we don't know what to do with it and a lot of people don't know how to handle emotion and don't know how to verbally express it and don't know how to um, to deal with it so one healthy way is using a journal where you could take a journal you can write down your thoughts your feelings you know what's going on inside and you kind of get it out and you know it, it really does help out a lot I also suggest taking um, creating some goals for yourself creating short-term and long-term goals just because we may not you know over overcome these these things that are happening in our lives and things might happen we we can you know we don't we can set goals short term goals long term goals and if we don't get where we want to get it's not um, it's not failure you know some people think if we don't reach our our obstacle our goals in life that it, it's it's a uh, failure but it's not when you try there's no such thing as failure as long as you try there there is no such thing as as, as failure and those are you know those are two things that you know people could you know begin to do and you know there are, are many others 
I like that. I, I talk a lot. Of, um, a matter of fact, I even posted on Instagram a video similar to that idea that um, the only failure is in not trying at all. And if we look at even just Elon Musk, I mean, how many times he quote unquote failed in various mm-hmm. projects to get the projects that were, you know, the multi-million dollar ideas kind of thing. Yeah, definitely. Um, and that, you know, looking at other stories like that can be so inspiring when we feel like giving up. Um, I think, I think it can be a very powerful tool. So tons of research shows how food impacts our body, um, and disease. And lately there's been, you know, a slew of shows, programs on Netflix, the game changers, um, forks over knives, uh, the whole health. What do you think about, can you talk a little bit about the impact of, our modern diet on the disease process, our mental well-being, and all of that. Well, you know, we live in an environment that's to- totally full of toxins. Every day that we're exposed to toxins, whether it's the air we breathe or it, whether it's the uh, the food we intake, a lot of the foods that they sell in the markets, they don't even sell in in Europe because they banned a lot of the things because a lot of the foods have ingredients in them that are very toxic to the body. Um, you know, different artificial ingredients, uh, different things they use, um, you know, in eggs and, and milk and and chicken and other meats, uh, these things are very toxic to the body. They put arsenic in chicken for one. They put chlorine on cat carrots to make the carrots last longer. You know, these are things that go into our body and they don't, your body doesn't know what to do with it. So it stores it. And after time, it keeps storing it in the body. And before you know it, your body is full of toxins and your body doesn't know what to do with it. It doesn't know how to break it down. So it stays in your body and it, and it puts stress on your organs. And this is where disease comes in. And this is where um, people start feeling sluggish and tired and they don't feel well and they can't focus. And, you know, it's really important. People don't realize, but what we put in our bodies has a huge impact on our health and it even can make us feel unfocused and, 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 you know, hurt our mental clarity and, and, you know, and, you know, people don't realize that, you know, everything we eat plays a huge impact on the way we feel and even on the way we look, you know, and for one, you know, even artificial ingredients, a lot of the artificial ingredients that we have and that they sell in the market, we don't even need those things. They just use it to make the food look pretty. Like they make punch for instance, it's made full of sugar and they use red dye and red dye, you know, can cause cancer. So these are things, you know, you really have to take in consideration and you really have to think when you buy food, you know, is this food really good for my body and what is it going to do to do to me and, and to my family? I, I, I'm fresh off the heels of a 120 day detox where they kind of described, you know, everybody's got like a five gallon bucket and mm-hmm. from the day you're born, you start filling it up with toxins. And when that five gallon bucket gets full is when you start to see a lot of the symptoms of fatigue and various different things like that. And that you have to empty the bucket. You've got to do a full detox to kind of, you know, give your body some room to progress. And, um, for me in 120 days, all processed sugar has, has been removed. Um, caffeine has been removed. I mean, mm-hmm. and granted a lot of things were added back in because at the final three weeks of the diet, or the detox rather, I was down to a uh, very, very, very basic survival food because that mm-hmm. was part of it. So now since then things have been added in, but still, still vegetarian. Well, actually I can't say that I've been pescatarian, um, but I do catch, we do catch our own fish right. uh, in, in the ocean. But for me, um, when we were, we just got back from Panama and while we were down there, what was such a shock to me was that, you know, there's absolutely, and I've been to 22 countries, but I feel like Panama was like a far extreme of this. Absolutely no processed foods. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, you were lucky to find a stale bag of Frito-Lays in the airport. That was it. There was no, yeah. Other than that, everything was, you know, made fresh, took forever, but it was made fresh. And yeah. So, um, lucky for me, I was able to continue my detox on, on my, on my trip. Um, but it's amazing. I think how better functioning, um, every element seems to be like, I don't have that. I was drinking a coffee, maybe two a day. I'm not having any caffeine at all. Now, occasionally I'll have a green tea, but at two o'clock, no tiredness, no sluggishness, no fake tea. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's really unbelievable how they all interact together right. as well. Um, 
what do you think about the full component? What do you think about veganism versus vegetarianism versus pesca, ver keto, paleo, all these big kind of new, you know, not new, been around forever, but different concepts of diet. What do you say about those, the fads, the different things like that? Well, I think the more green you can put in your diet, the better. I think that, you know, our body was meant to, to eat green. It really wasn't meant to eat a lot of the other things that we eat. Um, you know, I'm not a full vegetarian, but I do incorporate a lot of green into my diet. I have some chicken. I have some fish. You know, I try to stay away from completely the red meat, um, you know, but I, you know, I do notice a difference, you know. Um, you know, I cut down on the sugar. I probably took about 90% of the sugar out of my diet, and then I, I you know, I focus you know, on a lot of green food, trying to eat um, protein and trying to eat, um, you know, just a lot of veg uh, vegetables and stuff like that. And I do notice a huge difference in how I feel. And even my digestive tract, you know, is so much better. And I notice that when I do eat bad foods, I, I can feel it. I, my body, you know, I can feel oh, how absolutely. hard my body is working just yeah. to break down those foods. And I don't feel good after I eat it anymore. And, uh, you know, it's, even for weight it's loss. It's totally too. true how it when you when you've taken it out and then you put it back it's like not even worth it like oh it's a holiday i'm gonna eat this special treat but then it's like you pay for it for three days because your body's not accustomed to having that toxin in you or whatever yeah definitely 100 percent. you know and uh you know even our, our society we suffer from so much obesity in this country and it's because you know a lot of times too our body you know we eat these these foods our body doesn't know what to do with it so it stores it you know they people eat so much you know food that with high sugar content processed foods you know our body doesn't know how to break it down our body stores a lot of this stuff and so many people today are you know suffering from being overweight and they're suffering from from obesity. And a lot of people try to, you know, try to say, oh, you know, be, being big is beautiful. But, you know, that's not the point. The point is that it's not healthy for you. And people are suffering from high bl blood pressure and they're suffering from heart disease and they're suffering, you know, they're having a hard time, you know, just standing on their own two feet and, you know, high cholesterol and all these other things that come along. You know, these are the things that we have to really worry about in our country and we really have to take seriously. You know, um, we really need to look at our health and look at what we're eating and putting it in our body bodies. It bums me out that, um, you know, mindful eating, that was one of the big things in Panama was the time, the socialization, nobody's on their cell phones. You're certainly not running through a McDonald's to grab something. No. You know, it's, it's all homemade, even at the restaurants that are quicker yeah. like at the fish market or something, it's still being made there. And there's this whole process that unfolds where when something takes that amount of time, you're not just scarfing it down. You're you know, you're getting fuller faster because you're being mindful about your eating where I think so many people in America are just driving through drive throughs getting the Big Mac, scarfing it down on the way to the next thing. Yeah. They're not even having an, uh, you know, the relationship that we're almost even creating with our food isn't healthy either. I don't think. Oh, Not 100%. even just the food that we're eating. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, and we're also we're, in this country, you're taught to eat these big, large quantities. You know, you go to a restaurant and they give you these these huge, insane sizes that you could probably eat for four or five days. Where if you go to another country, you know, usually, you know, when you're when you're given a meal, it's the size of your palm, you know, and, you know, mm -hmm. maybe a couple little mm -hmm. things on the side. But, you know, you, you don't see the quantity like you do in America for sure. Absolutely. Um, and I was even thinking about when you were talking about the processed sugars, you know, my son um, has made a choice, I think probably just from witnessing me go through six months of detox. <laughs> but uh, uh, he and my husband both made a choice to cut out um, extra processed sugar at all, like any processed sugar at all. Yeah. But, but he's still got some, you know, he's doing some peanut butters that have a little sugar in them or some yogurts that have some sugar, but slowly yeah. uh, because it is so addictive. It takes it some is. time. I think when people fail, they decide they want to eat healthy and they go, okay, I'm just going to cut all this crap out of my diet starting today. That yeah. lasts a day because those cravings are so intense. Tense, that addictive power of sugar yeah. um, is so overwhelming. How do you encourage people to start um, with removing some of these toxins from their diet? You know, I, it, it's a slow process. It's not like a one, two, three thing. And even like with sugar, you, you go through a withdrawal. You're going to notice some uncomfortable feelings and, you know, you're not going to feel good and, you know, and, and you know, you're going to notice the, the changes in your body. But afterwards, you're going to notice a total turnaround. Once that sugar is out of you and, all, you know, you're going to notice, you know, you're going to feel energy and you're going to, that craving for sugar is not going to be there. And a lot of those foods that you want to eat that, you know, that you used to want to eat are not going to be those, you know, 
cravings that you're having now, you're going to focus more on, on healthier foods and you're, you're not going to really miss a lot of those foods, you know, once they're out of your system. And it's, it's funny because he, he was offered a cookie and he took a bite of it and he goes, it's just too sweet. And then he chose farina with blueberries, uh, slivered almonds and syrup. Um, some maple syrup. That's what he chose instead. And I was like, wow, it's working. <laughs> yeah, no, it definitely is. You know, I noticed the same thing. Like I had um, my husband, you know, as a treat, he thought he'd bring home some raisinets for me. And I had a couple. And I'm like, oh, these are just too sweet. You know, I just like I used to love raisinets back in the day, you know, and uh, you do your your change of, of, of diet and your, your cravings and the foods you like uh, totally change once you start really kicking out all the junk out of your diet. I think too, um, when I first started my whole process, because again, mine was a little more intense with limitations. Um, but for me, what, what set me up for success was, um, having things ready to go that when I was starving, I yes. could quickly grab that were great, like some chopped up bell pepper and hummus or something like that, that yeah. was a good, healthy choice. That mm-hmm. is what saved me from not you know, microwaving a corn dog or something. Right, exactly. Yeah. No, you know, my daughter, she had lost, you know, right before the uh, prom, she wanted to lose some weight and she dropped 30 pounds and she became, she was, became a size four and she, uh, and she did it by preparing her meals beforehand and just eating healthy foods and just, you know, making enough for the next day and being able to have those, those foods in the refrigerator. So if she wanted it, it was right there for her. I love that. Now, so I'm one of the 42 billion people that suffer um, from thyroid problem. Mm-hmm. I actually was diagnosed with Hashimoto's at age 20, mm-hmm. um, was not medicated until age 30. Um, and I was medicated because I was pregnant. And so they wanted to be mindful of um, my TSH during pregnancy it has, a, it would impact him in utero. And um, my biggest like life dream is that I could suddenly cure my thyroid problem and not have to take medication. Um, and I'm curious, what do you think about people doing that holistically? I know there's pig's hormone and things like that, but, but how about healing thyroid inside out to where you don't need to take medication? You know, um, iodine is supposed to be really good. You could take the drops. I don't, I don't particularly like the drops because they're really harsh. So, you know, they have the capsules and they also have a supplement called T150 and it, it's a bunch of, other, there's a bunch of different, um, healthy supplements in, in T150 that actually work really well for the thyroid. And when I started taking that, um, you know, I noticed a change in my thyroid. I had a very sluggish thyroid. I was always cold. My metabolism was slow. And, you know, I noticed a lot of things. And when I started taking the T150, I don't have the the supplements right in front of me to to list off which ones are in there. But uh, that and the iodine, um, you know, my my thyroid started to kick up and I, you know, I'm always warm now. I'm, you know, my my metabolism improved and my my thyroid is, is nothing like it was before, you know, but I have to keep taking those supplements because, you know, when you stop taking them, your body kind of reverts to its old, you know, DNA, you know, you, you find the, the, the gut cause, the root of the problem, but then you have to constantly maintain it as well. You know, living a healthy lifestyle is a, is a, a daily, you know, a di- it's not, I wouldn't say a chore, but it, it's a, it's a lifestyle you have to incorporate and it's something you have to do all the time. But those two things, um, are really, um, really helpful for thyroid. So since you touched on supplements, I want to, I want to share with you what I found and get your thoughts and opinion on this. So coming off of the detox, obviously being on the detox, especially at the end, I was, um, taking quite a few supplements to, you know, just kind of fill in the gaps after going off of the program. I kind of incorporated the same ones I had. I take a daily power green. Um, Mm -hmm. I love amazing grass. I take a prebiotic probiotic, a turmeric. Um, mm-hmm. and then I take ritual vitamins, which is only nine. They've, th- this doctor developed this, it's nine essential ingredients with no, nine essential vitamins, no fillers and a clear capsule suspended by mint. And, um, they, they believe that these are the only nine vitamins that you don't get from your diet these days that you need B12, things right. like that. Mm-hmm. What do you think? How do you feel about that? that kind of regimen that I've come up with and just the recent studies on, um, toxicity and vitamin overdose kind of stuff and, and those concepts. 
I, I love it. I think that works really well. And, you know, and I, I take supplements every day. I take turmeric and I take a couple of the ones that you just mentioned. And I, you know, I take uh, my multivitamins and I take a pro a prebiotic and, and a probiotic. And, you know, I, I, I use, you know, supplements every day and I actually detox on a weekly basis, you know, and I, I use different supplements each day, you know, you know, that kind of help as well with detox, you know, and keeping that fiber in your diet too also helps and, you know, and cleansing your body on a, on a, on a, you know, consistent basis also helps your body. And I noticed a humongous change when I started detoxing, I, 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 you know, I noticed a, a huge change and, and one story for you real quick was, you know, when I was five, I developed epilepsy. And as I was growing older, I struggled tremendously with the disorder. And as I got older, um, I started working with an herbalist. And I started doing a lot of research for him. And I found a lot of information that kind of, you know, was, was good for me. And I started apl applying a lot of uh, different supplements for, for my body. And um, my seizures with my medication, they went down from nine seizures a month to six to five to four to three to two to being controlled. And, um, wow. you know, and I was detoxing. And that was the main thing I was doing. I was detoxing. Toxin. I was using milk thistle. You know, I take milk, milk thistle every day. And, you know, I, these things were really, you know, helping me and keeping those toxins out of my body were actually, you know, putting less stress on my organs, which was, you know, helping to not instigate those seizures. And, um, you know, so for me, detox is a big thing. And I, I, use, I like to detox kind of feel when I detox. And, the, and the, all the supplements you mentioned are great supplements for that. And even turmeric is great for inflammation. There's there's so many foods that we eat that, you know, have so much sodium and, and so much, you know, so many people go through bloatedness and, you know, um, turmeric is great for inflammation as well.